started, uh, I do want to put out there that there is no live broadcast today because of the power outages, and I don't know something's going on in there, but they are taping it, so it will be available if anyone thought they were going to watch it, and you can let them know that when they get home, they're going to put it up as soon as they can on tape so people can look at it. So we apologize for that. Um, roll call, please. Council Hamill. Here. Council Foley. Here. Council Katarina. Here. Um, and could we have approval of the minutes from September 26th? I would make a motion to approve those minutes. And I'll second that, although I wasn't here, so I can't really vote on it. That's correct. And all uh, in whatever <laughs> agreement to so we can tell us 4 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> all right. Um, I will now allow for public comment. Please keep your... Um, comments brief. We're going to try to keep them at three minutes. We won't run the timer. I kind of keep an eye. So, thank you. Hi, my name is Shelley Pelletier from 10 Snow Canning Road. Um, there are two items that I would like to address on the uh, on the draft. Um, the first one is the uh, on the fees for the medical marijuana cultivation. Um, the way it's listed is you, your um, you're listening, uh, listing it as we can um, as 500 square feet, which I understand is according to the state, but the state also gives us a choice. Um, we have different levels of licensing that we can do, uh, and we can do either plant count or 500 square feet. And depending upon how we grow, makes us gives basically gives us the decision on which licensing we're going to go for. Um, so I would like, if you're going to uh, copy the state, then I would like to have the whole state licensing fees in that so that it does copy the state, whether it be plant count or 500 square feet. Okay. Do you have a preference? I'm just curious. Um, uh, we do plant count because we grow our plants bigger. Um, if I would do, if I would, if I would be forced to do 500 square feet, I would have to change the way I grow because I would have to change the size of my plants. So then the and I've been growing this way for five years and it's worked. So so, <clears throat> so this is my bugaboo is the term canopy, which no one seems to be able to tell me what it means. Is well, that the plant size? Well, yes. I mean, to give you an instance, one of my one of my flower rooms is 1,250 square feet. Mm -hmm. According to the state, I can, I can allow two caregivers in there as mm -hmm. long as we're related, um, which, but that still only gives me 1,000 square feet. So in order, for me to, in order for me to make the money I need to make, my plants, typically my plants are five, five to seven feet tall. Now my plants have to be two feet tall. So it changes the way I grow. Okay. And bear with me one second, Shelley, because I was looking at the wrong thing here. So what we've got here is medical marijuana cultivation. We've got $240 for six mature plants, canopy not to exceed 500 square feet, and that's where you're talking about the... Right. Okay. The state gives me a choice. Either I can do, I, I can do what they call 30-60, or mm -hmm. I can do 60-30, which the 30-60 the is the 500 square feet. The 60-30 is my plant count. Which means I means I can I'm allowed 60 immature and 30 mature. So I, I do the 30 mature because I grow bigger plants and I and that's what I can fit into my space. It's instead of the canopy. Instead of the canopy, right? So there's no square footage. Right. There's it, I'm I'm limited on my square footage as long as I stay within my plant count. And Jean Marie, this language came in at the last minute. Yeah. Um, I spoke about it with. Shelley, yeah. I, I she was was wrapping up this ordinance packet when I happened to get a phone call from I can't remember the woman's name. Um, Becca, maybe Ginger. No, nope. um, Vicky. I'm sorry, Vicky. One, That's I don't know, a woman, uh, and from the state office, and she was calling about a different issue, and I said, you know, I'm I'm we've got this one space that we didn't get to address that I'd love to put something yeah. in for the counselors to consider. What do you guys have as a state fee for? Um, okay medical marijuana cultivation facilities. And she said, our fee is $240 per six plants with a maximum of 500 square feet of canopy. 
And okay. so that's what I wrote in. Right. So I'm certainly happy to call her back and get the full extent of the language if, if that there seems to be missing. That's new. That's new this year, in fact. They held, okay. up some, they held up some licenses because of that, because they just introduced it, I'd say, less than a month ago. That 500 square feet of canopy, that was something brand new that the state has it's brought this. in. Okay, and this, so this language that's in here now is what you're recommending? But it's what I'm directly quoting from the woman from the state office of marijuana, basically. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When I asked her, you know, what was the state using as a licensing fee? Um, when Phil and I looked through, as we were directed to do last time, to find municipalities to compare, um, we weren't having a lot of success, and so we decided to just kind of give you as a starting place yeah. the state language um, to be thinking about costs for licensing. And so that's all I'm asking. If you're going to mirror the state language, mirror it, mirror it to either plant count or canopy space. But not both. As, as the state gives us the choice. Okay. Can I ask a dumb question? Or maybe not dumb, but <laughs> um, so with that introduction of the new uh, language from the state, are they still giving that choice? Yep. Or is it? Yes, they are. Temporary. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, didn't, I was going to wait until you were done. It's temporary. Uh, the legislature had only authorized the Office of Marijuana Policy to charge by plant count. They put the 500 square feet in play to try to do something nice for the caregivers. I think they regret doing it. There's a fix in that will allow them to charge a flat fee for that 500 square feet. So it's a little confusing right now. So what I was going to say is don't don't look at it that way. Um, that is something that is going to change really like this session. I think just a flat fee for medical cultivation is probably more appropriate. They are going to be your smallest, small scale caregivers. You know, I throw out $500, you know, something like that. I think it's what some other towns are doing, just what it takes to sort of process them, and to not get mired down in the plant count business. That's a super technical thing that's about to change anyway. So we're going to be with something that doesn't work. But it also strikes me as an enforcement issue. Like, are we going right. to go out and start counting you know plants? Like, plant <laughs> like <laughs> right. The amount of plants at 500 square feet, whether it's double or half, that doesn't grow any more cannabis. It's just by the square foot. Right. And Jean Marie Canopy literally is just the top. Well, that's what I figured. Yeah. But it, so, I, but me, it's like. If she had four small rooms, she could do an aggregate of 500 square feet yeah. per caregiver. But I don't have four but small rooms. But she doesn't. Rooms. That's, that's the problem. That's my, that's yeah. my yeah. issue is I don't have right. four small rooms. My rooms are 1,000 square feet or larger on my flower space. So this, this just, it just throws a wrench in, in how I grow. Yeah, just a flat piece. Yeah, okay. Yeah. We can discuss it when we get to the discussion okay. part. What is, anything else, Sean? Yeah, the second thing I have is on, um, on the grandfather, the de December 13th, if we were. Do you know what section of the page we're in? I'm sorry. <laughs> nope, nope, I haven't folded over. Um, se uh, I don't, uh, section 10. It's right after section 10. Yep. So you name uh, retail stores, <coughs> medical, med caregiver retail stores, marijuana dispensaries, testing facilities, and manufacturing facilities. Why aren't cultivation facilities in there? We were told if we were had our certificate of occupancy prior to that, that we would be grandfathered, and we're not listed. I'm sorry, can you help me find the page number? Yeah, it's page 9. Uh, A10. Uh, excuse me, 10. A five. I think that is purely an oversight. I, okay. I really no. That I think that is simply. Yeah, um, I think when Phil was typing things in, it just got skipped. Thank you for catching it. That's yeah, an that's easy. Good. That's an easy. Yeah, that's good catch. Those guys. <laughs> okay. That takes it. a village, right? That's all. I, that's it. Yes, it is. All right. Thank you, Shelley. All right. Thank you. Great. I'll just pick up where she left off. Yeah. Um, Tell us who you are. I'm Jill just Foster. The... We're at 137 <laughs> Pleasant Hill Road. I'm general counsel for Mainly Medical. Um, I know Mr. Burke sent a letter regarding the confidentiality issues that still exist within Scarborough's ordinance. I won't belabor it because you have it in writing. Those are real live issues um, that Phil should maybe take a look at before you pass it on. We'll be in a position... We don't want to do anything to delay this any further. I'm actually here tonight to just encourage you to move it on as is. And, but those would be things we would have no choice but to challenge on the back end. 
-hmm. So I just ask that someone take a look at it, that they'll really take a look at what John Burke is saying, because those are real live issues. And they're issues, the liability is on the caregiver there. So we're put in a kind of tough spot. Um, I want to uh, talk about dispensary. I think that we were able to discuss that after the meeting. Um, it, it's in, still in the ordinance, sort of. There's no fee for it. We're, when you all said no sales to us, no retail means no retail. That means no big cannabis, big corporate dispensaries in Scarborough either. So we would ask that you not include dispensaries. That would be a devastating blow to all of the small caregivers in Scarborough. So if the message coming out of this committee is no retail, that in our minds includes dispensaries. Um, the fees, I emailed Larissa the latest from Portland. Um, the problem, the way I see it, when you look at, the, there are a couple of problems. Uh, C and D on the license fee class, there is a huge difference between a 2,000 to 7,000 square foot canopy and uh, the seven to 20,000 square foot mm -hmm. category. Um, it, that is a just, wildly inappropriate fee for a small grow. 2,000 to 7,000 feet is a very small grow. So we would ask that you look at adjusting that. Mm -hmm. I would also say overall, the fees, as you know, um, are required by state law to just be what it costs to fund enforcement. Um, I think there's about 25 cultivation operations in Scarborough-ish. Even if there are 20 and each one of them is charged $10,000, that's $200,000. That's way more than it's going to cost to do enforcement in a town not opting in for any kind of retail. The retail enforcement piece is, I think, what would cost the most money. Um, and then, other than that, um, just we are looking forward to getting licensed for adult use for cultivation. I have nothing else to say about retail. <laughs> I am just really looking forward to you guys moving this on. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? My name is Nick Messard. I personally live on Holmes Road and my grow and manufacturing and uh, retail store is at Three Commercial in Scarborough. Um, the one thing I really hear a lot is like public effect or what it'll do to the public or the general area. Um, I've been running a retail store for six years in your community, and none of you guys have clearly noticed if you think that there will be a public effect. There hasn't been one, so where is it coming from if I've been here six years? I've never used the fire department, the police department, for any emergency calls. I've had one false alarm, and I've allowed the fire department to do training in my building. I've been a good steward here, and I think that you guys should just consider making sure that the people who here were doing business in the way they were should continue to be able to do that. If you guys allow me to grow, dispense it, and manufacture it, which is what I've been doing for six years, um, then I would have no issues with anything here. Um, the only other thing is, like um, Jill said, is the fee jump, the difference there. Mm -hmm. um, 10 and 10, it should be more, probably like five. Um, also, um, everyone seems to be targeting the, the square footage of the grows. Um, and to give you an inside look, I do all of it vertically. And, the grow doesn't make the most. It's my manufacturing. and You have the manufacturing at 2,500. So I just want to redirect your guys' focus so you know like where the profit centers really are. Because the farmer always gets screwed. It's not the farmer making all the money. It's the guy post-processing his mistakes. It's the person turning it into something more valuable, into edibles. So I ask that you please look at the pricing for even the tier four, because matching the states is very, very high. Thank you. Thanks. Anyone else? Hi, I'm Allison Bristol, 6 Bayview Avenue. Uh, a couple of comments on the draft. Uh, first, on Section 7C, the public hearing and notice, it's um, only seven days. And um, the, the only thing that needs to be done to notify the public if a, a business is going in is to post something clearly and uh, publish something in a Coverland County newspaper, which I don't think is is um, adequate, and I'll use mainly medical as an example, that if something was posted clearly there, it's off the road. And if something is published in a Cumberland County newspaper and there are taxpayers who 
live here seasonally and aren't here, then you would n not know that something is going in nearby. So that's something I hope you'll take under consideration. Um, in Section 10, um, last, at the last meeting there was discussion about not having a need for a zoning overlay any longer without the retail components, and I would disagree with that, in that if um, the cultivation is going to be allowed in any RF zone, there's a lot of RF zones that are now pretty much residential, and I'm <coughs> thinking specifically about the Route 77 corridor and the area around the Piper Shores contract zone, so I don't think that that would be an appropriate place for cultivation. So there might be an RF overlay, perhaps, you know, in town. Um, then the other, the other, this is more of a question, really, in looking at um, the permitted uses in the different zones. Um, case in point, with the marijuana cultivation facility, um, it, at Pine Point Industrial Overlay District, it defines it within a fully enclosed structure. Mm -hmm. And I've been working off the assumption, and maybe I'm wrong, that any cultivation would be in a, in a fully enclosed structure with proper odor <coughs> and, uh, you know, odor mitigation and ventilation. So if that could be tightened up, because otherwise it just sounds like, you know, you could have marijuana growing in a field with, you know, very little control over the smell. Thank you. Thank you. Denise Hamilton to Rod Road. Um, just to further on the public hearing, will letters not go out to adjoining neighbors <coughs> like they are when I applied for an in-home business? application and license with the town, our neighbors were notified that we had a, an application. That's a good question. I had that question. So. I'm reading that in my notes. Okay. But it... <laughs> I'd like to know. I mean, our letters can be sent to. We're going to discuss Fury's point. Duly noted the issue, and I'm aware of it, so Thank you. thanks. Anyone else? Real quickly. Um, I identified the issue that she pointed out in Two Rod Road. I know the family that was making the odor issue. Um, I, I reached out to them, I gave them a carbon filter also told him that this whole town is speaking about what he's doing um, so I hope that changes um, the other thing is um, you guys are really pounding down on the smell but you have no idea that hemp is right behind this whole cannabis thing and right now my facility is legally allowed to grow hemp and I'm currently drying it in Connex containers outside and it reeks like cannabis outside my facility but I have the license from the state to be able to do hemp at my facility which is a total outdoor crop it's illegal to grow it inside um, and there's, there's no odor violation for having hemp. So I would say think about where hemp is coming in because it's going to be on one acre, two acre parcels and people are, are not allowed to grow it inside and it smells, it's identical to cannabis. Um, so that odor is impossible to control. Also, a lot of people like to farm it outside or in greenhouses so it's not safe to assume it's in a sealed facility. Um, and then also the lot sizes I think should be two acres and bigger. Um, so that's not in the residential areas, mm -hmm. but I do think if you make it any bigger, it will make the large pieces of property worth more and inflate the price, and it will affect the farming community that's moving back to Scarborough mm -hmm. in a negative way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? One more Real quickly. On this is my rebuttal. Hold on, hold yeah. on. I can okay. get after the this class again to behave over here. Uh oh. Trying to get the class. G Marie's to looking at you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> going no, I back to the rural farmland that surrounds Piper Shores and it is all over. Mm -hmm. I, I believe a lot of that, in, and Jay was here a second ago. That, that's all too, you know, the, the area that's around the new contract zone for uh, Piper Shores, that's all two acres only, if I'm, if I'm correct. So somebody could buy you know, a parcel mm -hmm. and 
you know, set up a cultivation facility of two acres is a requirement. So that, you know, again, another reason to maybe look at a zoning overlay. Well, no one's trying to Thank you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Nick, 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 Nick. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Anyone else? Going, going, on. All right, now I'm going to remind everyone, we don't want you rewielding the gavel again today. So uh, the, at this point, it now becomes a discussion between us here at the table as to what we want to do. Um, and we may reach out and ask a question of the audience, but we may not. So we uh, bear with us, OK? That's all I ask. You made some good points. You made some very good points. Um, I think what I would like to do, well, not I think, I do know what I would like to do um, with my fellow counselors here. The, the intent today is to get this to council. And I will remind the audience, whether they're watching a videotape or those of you who are here, that again, this is the first step, so to speak. The ordinance committee comes up with a draft ordinance that goes to council. Now, it has to go through council again, so it's going to go through another vetting process. Doesn't mean that what we come up with here is the absolute end result. You can continue to lobby. In fact, I would add that it probably it's will good, not be the end result. It yes. It's a work in progress. Yeah, it's a work in progress. So, you know, I don't want people getting all... But we've got to start somewhere. Yeah, but we do have to start somewhere. So with that being said, um, I'd like to go down through, um, let's look at the chapter 1018 as written. Uh, I didn't hear or uh, are you guys have anything you want changed to section one purpose? I do not have any change in that. So I'm just going to go down, I'm going to go right, down so through just it hold the right doc here, yeah. so. Okay. And you're in section. I'm starting right at the beginning. Okay. Chapter 1018, uh, Town of Warren is the draft. I, I didn't see any changes for section one purpose. I didn't I'm hear fine. anything. Okay. Section two authority. I saw nothing. Section three definitions. I saw nothing or heard anything. So that brings us over to section four license required. <coughs> any comment? I had no comments there. Uh, Dawn, that's your license nope. required. I'm good. Section 5, license application. I'm good on that. I think all my, most of the things I had concerns about have been raised here. Yeah, and we're going to get to yeah. it. Well, I'm just going down so yep. people right. can follow along. Mm -hmm. Now we're at Section 6. <laughs> <laughs> application and license fees. Please so for those of you who have this, we're on page 6 at, at the bottom, Section 6. And um, we don't have anything filled in here for an application fee, Marissa. Do you mind? One of the us in on sure. That? They drew, we just had. I think in the conversation last month, it just didn't get addressed. Um, I was looking at Auburn's today. They have a five hundred dollar application fee. I think that somewhere in that range is probably appropriate. Mm -hmm. That's just to kind of say we'd like to apply. We'd like to apply for this. It's not actually granting them a license. It's granting them the right to apply. Yeah. Um, so I think that anything over five hundred, I would be. You know, careful yeah. with. Um, is it fundable? If, uh, if for some reason they're up, they're denied. No, because it's no, going to use staff time no, and so okay. forth. It's time. Yep. Okay. So I would uh, entertain a motion. I would uh, make a motion that we uh, confirm that an applicant must pay a five hundred dollar application fee. Do you have a second? I'll second it for purposes of discussion. Discussion? <laughs> go, ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. When we were here last time and talked about application fees, we were at ground zero. It was the first time we looked at numbers. And the numbers that we proposed, we focused on starting at the high end. Now, I read in detail uh, the uh, email from Mr. Burke and you know, his comments about where the pricing ought to be and how we're different than Portland and how we haven't costed it. And to be fair, you're right, we, have not, we haven't rolled up to that amount, but our bias was at that time to start high and to go from there. So that's why we started with those numbers. And it was, you know, I assumed that we would have some discussion. But the idea of, of the whole issue here is that uh, there will be enforcement, there will be services required, and we are getting zero revenues from the state 
you know, 0.00, .00 revenues. This has been noted as a major issue in, throughout the country in terms of other states that have been dealing with the same issue. And people have highlighted this as the main reason why it's been extremely difficult to, to get to a, a point where municipalities and, and producers and buyers are all happy with this. So, so I, you know, uh, again, I think we're, we're, as we described before, being cautious. We're trying to be fair, but also deliberate uh, in how we move. So I'm, you know, I'm open to discussion, but, um, you know, I, that's why we are kind of starting on the high end. We're, we're, we're looking out for, you know, try, trying to uh, focus on balancing the interests of us to enforce and the costs associated with that with folks that are, that are operating. Katie. Yeah, so um, I, I guess for me, the, the starting high with the idea that we might roll it back, I've never seen that work or happen in reality. Uh, fees always tend to go up rather than down. Um, and I don't know, you know, given a first stab at this, I don't know that, that we're getting the number right. I'd probably be more comfortable with something around 350. Um, you know, uh, but yeah, it's not, a, you know, I don't feel so strongly about it that I'm going to fight the committee on it. If you feel strongly about it being at five, I just know that with fees in general, um, I've just never seen us roll it back. Because so, what yeah. we end up doing, but but fair enough, and your point about enforcement is true. I, I think I'm not sure who said it. Somebody said, well, you won't be spending $200,000 on enforcement. I think people underestimate what goes into enforcing even the every every ordinance that we pass. Um, there's significant cost to the town. So, so I, the only thing I say is we looked at we actually looked at data. We looked at a range of towns, and I don't have that data in front of me now. I'm uh, trying to think. Well, if we're not Portland, then we're somewhere. We tend to lead on that end of things. I mean, if you look at uh, you know trash collection or other services like that, we tend to be in the high end when you're looking at size of uh, you know other municipalities and towns in Cumberland. We tend to be right up there with Portland, South Portland, and generally Scarborough's number three mm -hmm. on the list. So that was sort of the reasoning for why we picked on the high end. But I don't, I can't right now pick, you know, are we going to be more like South Portland and less like Sanford? I, you know, I don't know, but we were, that was kind of where we had placed it. And I don't have a range. I can't provide you with a range between uh, what Portland's was and what the, you know, maybe the next lower town, uh, the other side of us ought to be. So. But I'd rather, I, you know, I'm not opposed to uh, revising, but I'd rather do that in an informed way, looking at data, rather than saying directionally it's, it's correct. I'm going to ask a question of Mr. Chase, if you don't mind. <laughs> um, when people apply to the planning board and whatever, at various application fees for developers and whatnot, We're not being recorded, so you could probably talk from wherever you want. Oh, we're not <laughs> recording. the habit of the oh, podium. Okay. Yep, habit. No, what, no we, we are recording, but it's on delay. Oh, because it's not it is live. recording. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> so let's see. We have our, our fees vary for planning board applications. Right. For site plan, it depends on the size of the building. For subdivision and number of the lots, board of appeals, a typical application is, I'm looking at Brian Longstaff, I, I was going to say 250. Okay. Um, I think our planning board applications, we sort of say a baseline of 250, and then we go, right. we ramp up from there. Um, <coughs> so if that helps. Yeah, I just wanted to, because I wanted to get a sense of, well, are we in the same ballpark as what goes on for planning or zoning board of appeals or, or whatever? Thank you. Uh, I would, I originally looked at this and was leaning towards the 500, but then when I'm thinking about, they are also responsible for our expenses associated with review of applications, including all the criminal background checks and costs of third party review. You know, you're going to add that onto the application fee. I would, I think I would lean towards uh, Councilor Foley's 350. That's where I would come down on this, I think. Yep. And then so, if other things have to be added, we would add that in. So, yeah, so let's it's a starting point. It might yeah. change next year, but yeah, I'm okay with that. I don't think we start. So, could we have a motion, please? Uh, so, in the form of a motion, <laughs> uh, I propose that we set the application fee at three hundred fifty dollars. Second. Do we have a second? You can second. Uh, well, okay. Well, Make I'll second the meeting and second. <laughs> Come on, do your part. All those in favor. Okay, three fifty. <laughs> 
Jean Ray, can yeah. we go back just one second? Um, yeah. I wanted to address the confidentiality issue. You have on your, in front of you, this goes to section five, which is why I wanted to stop. Oh, here. okay. So Phil responds, um, he was not, he wasn't listed as a recipient, but he was blind carbon copied on John Burke's email, so he did see what um. Mr. Burke had to say. Um, and he sent an email back saying um, that, uh, in my view, the ordinance does not violate the MMMA confidentiality provisions and that the provisions in that statute still apply. The town is permitted to ask for certain information to process a license application. Likewise, certain information related to caregivers are confidential under 22 RMF MRS 2425A12. But he does say, the South Portland language that John Burke, Burke proposed works fine. You could include the following as a new subsection R under section 5. And then he gives us language that's directly matching with what South Portland had. So I, that's just up for you guys to decide. He wanted me to just kind of highlight that to you. In his opinion, as your counsel, we, he does not feel we need to add the language, but if you would like to, it certainly doesn't hurt anything mm -hmm. to add the language. And he's giving you the example language that he would suggest would be appropriate. Personally, I, I'm fine with the language the way it is, but. Me too. I mean, the language, the additional language there, I don't know, um, it's, it's dense. <laughs> It's dense, and um, I'd rather try to keep it simple if we feel mm -hmm. the language that's there, uh, uh, the economical language is effective and, uh, and appropriate. I'm fine with the language. Okay. Okay. Thank We're you. We're good. Thank you for bringing that up. Yep. Thanks. All right, now down to the fees. Uh, so we have, we're looking at first adult use marijuana cultivation f uh, facility <coughs> with a tier one, zero to 500 square feet of plant canopy, $500. Tier two, 501 to 2000, mature plant canopy, 3000. I did make that notice myself. I'm like, why do we have 10 on each? So that would be, anyway. again, your staff. Um, we <laughs> hadn't discussed what to do with tier four. Portland didn't have an example for tier four. 10,000 seemed high, so I figured we would put it at tier four. Um, I couldn't see any justification at the state yep. level or Portland's level as far as examples of cost being yep. higher than that. So that's why it's, it's doubling up there. Okay. Um, as uh, Ms. Polster mentioned, she and I did speak, um, and she sent me a copy of the language that's being um, proposed in Portland. You have copies of that. It's, we had a bit of a printer paper mix-up, so it's on goldenrod. Um, and uh, you can see that they are proposing to drop that tier three down to 7,500 yeah. instead okay. of the 10,000 that it was previously. I would be fine with that, 7,500. Now, who's, who's are these from again? The so you, the staff was directed to use Portland's fee schedule yep. for these mm -hmm. at the last meeting. Yep. Portland does That's not have a mean. tier four. Yep. So if we wish to allow for tier four, I needed to put a number in there for you guys to discuss. Yep. Um, and since Portland had capped out at 10,000, I figured we could cap out at 10,000 too, just at that tier four okay. as a starting place for discussion. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Yeah. So I would make a motion, since Dawn says I can do that, <laughs> that we put 75 <laughs> in here. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion? All in favor? Okay, so we'll change that C, 6B1C <laughs> to uh, 7,500. And then tier four, uh, 10,000. Yeah. We could be okay with that. All right. right. Flip the page. Adult use of medical marijuana testing facility, 1,000. Any discussion on that? Adult use of medical marijuana product manufacturing facility, 2,500. Any discussion on that? No. Now we're, we're what Shelley was discussing here, which is your medical marijuana cultivation facility. And I, I'm more confused <laughs> than I was prior. So I think S since I, you talked to the state. Sure. What I think I'm understanding from both um, Shelley and from Jill is that this might be a place where instead of worrying about, so the state language, their license is going to be based on, from what I understood from the state, and I understand that it's in flux, but what the woman said to me earlier uh, at the end of last week was that they are licensing them at $240 for every six mature plants. Um, and then the canopy issue, if we just kind of take that away. I think that there is value from an enforcement standpoint and from you know staff time needs. Instead of saying $240 per six mature plants, mm -hmm. if you wanted to simply have um, a flat fee, whether you wanted to have a flat fee by square footage or a flat fee just in general, I think that either way could be cleaner than trying to count plants. Yeah. yeah. I, I would agree. Completely agree. We're not setting enough pain. So, but I would say though, uh, if I may, um, <coughs> 
I don't I don't know how big the range is between right. small to big canopies. So, um, you know, not opposed in principle to setting a number, but if we're going to set that number, it ought to be at the middle of the range, not at the mm -hmm. low end of the range. So, so what would you say for I want I I you know I wanted to ask Shelley if she could give us an idea of what how do you think the language should read? You know, Shelley, I understand you your point, but can you Shelley, do you mind going Could you okay. propose? For the, li for the license that I have, my, for my caregiver license, I pay $1,200 because I go by plant count. I'm allowed 30, I'm actually allowed 36 plants. Um, I understand that you don't want to count plants. The state counts plants. We get inspected by the state. Right. Leave, leave that up to the state. Uh, and, you know, they'll make sure that we're compliant in it. So, um, I mean, you could, you could do, and for the 500 square feet, it's actually $2,400 because you're allowed 60 mature plants, not 30 mature plants. So, of course, it doubles, it doubles the, uh, the fee. So, I mean, so it's anywhere between 1200 and 2400 pretty much. Fee. Yeah, go ahead, Jill. For footage or fees. So, because what I'm driving at is I want to get at what's, what's going to work. Okay, what's... I apologize. You already have a price for zero to 500 square feet for adult use, and it's $500. This is no different, except medical makes less money than adult use. So why would you do a different price for 500 square feet under medical than you have for adult use? That already exists as B1A so on your fee schedule. So you're saying $500 for every 500 square feet? Well, so they can only grow a max of 500 square feet. Okay. No, I can grow no. Yeah, I she's grow saying she can grow more. I don't do by square feet. That's right. And this is yeah. Small. I'm sorry, but this I'm is I'm just where saying I'm flat feet. Okay. So I'm not trying not to change the way you grow, yeah. but just it, sure, 500 bucks for every 500 square feet. Yeah. But you already have a price for 500 square feet. Or I think I'm here. I mean, if, if, if you were doing to go that direction, could you go, uh, if, if it's $500 for every 500 square feet, that sounds like $100 a 100 square feet to me. Or a dollar a square foot, right? right. We're, we're in like fraction right. reduction here. So I think that there's uh, we can go with that space. Also, we could make it simple if these are other options. Toss. I don't have yeah, a preference, yeah. okay? But um, instead of saying adult use marijuana cultivation facilities, it could be adult use or medical marijuana cultivation facilities, and then you could capture that in together. Yeah. Together. I so, just want to make sure we're capturing. You know, it sounds like you have different oh, operations yeah, yeah. that that. Uh, that uh, go by different guidelines, and you're under a certain set of uh, uh, rules now that seem to work for uh, but then the person. But then they'll be under the tiers. I know, I know. It's so, a but the other the other question I have, I I know we haven't answered the first question before we go to the next one, but don't we have we have limitations on size elsewhere in the regs, mm -hmm. other than plant count and square footage? Don't we have? Um, facility limitations in terms of square footage. I'm not sure about that. Or am I dreaming? Yeah, are you looking at if you flip back to adult use marijuana cultivation and use the tier and hold on? I could be. You know, Nick, you can go up and stand and we'll, and we'll wait as soon as we get this. Right. All right, go ahead. <laughs> I actually sponsored and paid for the square footage bill. Speak into um, the mic so we can hear you. The whole point of the square footage bill was to make it easier on growers so they didn't have to yeah. grow monstrous plants. You don't make any more money by being in 500 square feet. That's why they capped it so small. They're saying you can have as many plants in 500 square right. feet as you want because it makes it easier on us and more cost effective. We don't make any more money necessarily on the 500 square feet. If you grow by plant count, you can grow in as many square feet as you want. And all we want to do in the square footage style is grow as many plants as you can in 500 square feet, which is makes your vegetation nursery time instead of three months, three weeks. So we don't have to baby these plants for six months of their life. They're only alive for three weeks and then they go in the flower room for two months. So it cut the cycle in half and just saves us money on the back end from taking care of these. The 500 square feet actually really isn't a gift. It's just something we would hope to grow on eventually. So we started at 500 because we knew the state would work with it. What screwed it up was the state has it in the regulations that we have to play by, pay by plant. They're trying to make it a flat rate because no one will grow 500 plants in 500 square feet if they have to pay $500 every single time or the other proposed structure. So they are putting in a workaround. Um, it's just going to take this session to do that. Um, they also put in a piece where each town can take profit, and that will most likely pass this session too. Other 12%. Yep. So I there is also. So. LD I hope yep. so. Um, I've been lobbying in Maine for six years. If you guys have any questions about the cannabis industry specifically, I'd love to answer them. I'm also a founding member of the Maine Cannabis Industry Association. We're 50 members strong. 
if you have any questions for any of those professionals, they would love to answer them too. Um, like I said, I'm just trying to be a resource and keep my business in Scarborough alive and competitive. Yeah. Thank you, Nick. So he, I, I'm just looking at this 240 for six mature plants. That's so if you were to imagine if a caregiver that was yeah. had, had 30 plants, yeah. that would be five times that. So you're looking at, let's just call it just about $1,200. Right, that's what I was thinking. So the question I have sort of is, I'm hearing sort of this density argument that a gentleman just made in terms of you know um, square footage versus number of plants. Then I start thinking about things, well, what, what's the effect on odor, you know, those kinds of things. So you may you know, have uh, not a big space, but you're going to grow a lot of plants. Does that, you know, are there any kind of odor implications one way or the other? Well, they other? aren't supposed to there allow, is. there's an odor. Pardon? There's no odor allowed beyond the boundary of the property. I know, but I, yeah. but. I know, but I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, so yeah, this. 20, square foot square foot. <laughs> I mean, I would just, as, I'm, I'm leaning more towards the flat fee, and I'm, you know, doing that math that Larissa yeah. did, which is kind yeah. of where I was sort yeah. of heading. Yeah, where it's medical, it's not adult use. Yeah. I would say 1,200. Yeah. Flat I'm, fee. Yeah, I, I think we try to keep it simple at this point. We learn as we go. Because the state's going to muck around with us. And more. we'll probably be adjusting to what the state right. does. So I don't want to try to presume we know more than the state <laughs> does now or will in the future. So I, I think we'd just be a little conservative and economical in terms of the language that we are proposing uh, so we don't have to unravel it all later. So, I mean, we're we're going to be learning as we, as we go here. Well, so. then I'm going to... Make another. Yeah, I'm gonna make a motion. <laughs> okay. So you're gonna charge twelve hundred under medical for the same amount of space you charge five hundred for under adult use. I don't think so. Yeah, that's true. It's well, but use. if a grower like Shelly is growing on uh, over a thousand square feet, then that twelve hundred is actually significantly right. less than, than it would be for the adult use. Well, I don't think we're, they're, no, they're not talking about square footage at all anymore. They're just saying right. if you're going to figure out what the whatever flat, size what flow you have, sense. this is right. the flat fee. Right. And what I'm hearing. It's and if it's a flat that. fee, it should just be equal to rec. If that's two and a half times what rec is. Mm -hmm. And it's a medical program. It's medical. That's an exorbitant. Because, see, that's where they come from. That tier one, zero to 500 is 500. Why do you make the rec one right. 1250 and make the medical one 500? Make the rec one 1500. I'm not going to die on this one. I mean, All right. I'll know. make a motion to make it 500 for 500. Although then we get 500 square feet, what if they? But you're limited to 500 square feet, right? For no, that's what I'm that's saying. Right. That's what I'm saying. The square feet thing doesn't make, doesn't sense, make sense. Right. Each right. caregiver can spread their right. That's right. They want. right. That's right. That's right. The size of those two tables. Yeah. <laughs> that is a big point. <laughs> I didn't realize I said that out loud. <laughs> no, you are right. It is a big point. I was thinking the same thing. I don't know. I go back to my 1200 flat fee discussion. What are you thinking? I like the idea of a flat fee. Yep. I see the discrepancy between the yep. two, and that's I'm struggling with that. Yep. So uh, do we raise the other and lower this and meet somewhere in the middle at 750 on both of them? do that. So what's the proposal? She's saying, and that's not exactly split. She's saying put a tier it. one, go back to uh, 6B1A mm -hmm. and make that 750 and mm -hmm. then make this 750. So taking from one to get the other but making them equitable based on so yeah, until, we can until the state out. figures yeah, out what they I'm doing. okay with that. Okay, so I will make a motion to amend, I don't have the numbers. Um, B1A. Yep. Uh, section 6 B 1 A um, to seven hundred fifty dollars and then section f uh, four under B right still under B yep B one yep uh, also to seven hundred fifty dollars yeah yep is that a second there's a second yes I, I said yep but it was a second <laughs> all those yes. in favor 
Yeah. All right. <laughs> we, we try to be reasonable. <laughs> All right, dispensary. You know, after uh, some thought, part of me is now thinking, why are we, why are we allowing dispensaries? Please discuss. <laughs> dispensaries are limited. The state limits dispensaries to I don't know how many. It's been a, I don't know. It's a lottery, or I don't know how they're doing it exactly. Do you want to get up there and answer that for me, please, for the purpose of the public? <laughs> Uh, there was an application process in 2009, yeah. and there was only eight given out, and those yeah. eight that have been given out, they've never given any more. There's supposed to be six more coming out. That's what I thought. Like, um, they yeah. have no situation figured out for those yet. They're kind of just sitting there idle. Yeah, because I talked to Eric Gunderson briefly about that, and he was like... <laughs> So, um, so this could be one of those places where you scratch it now, and if yep. the state decides to move forward, you can always revisit in a couple of years and decide if you uh, want to add it in then. I make a motion precisely stated. <laughs> by Which is what? By Ms. Larissa Crockett. Crockett does not make any motions as she is staff. So she recommended that we strike number five until we get guidance from the great so state. So what's of Maine. going on with dispensaries? Yes. We strike it until Second. we know more. All in favor? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. So. Thank you. Got two thank yous. <laughs> <laughs> They're on a roll today. Two, Look at you're that. You're welcome. Thank you. So, um, all right, let's continue. I have something, have something on seven. Yeah, we're going to go down on seven now. Your lead here. We're on licensing authority and procedure. Go ahead, Mr. Hannah. So, uh, we touched on this earlier. Uh, I think someone had brought up the point of uh, public hearing and felt that the posting and the press herald was not adequate. I agree. We follow. I mean, for example, we had something in town here where. Uh, I won't say who, but somebody went and cut a bunch of uh, old growth pine trees that oh, probably yeah. once upon a time used to be used as masts on British ships. So, it, you know, and they now there's an ordinance that will require that those abutters get <coughs> notification in writing. <laughs> Jay's familiar with this. I recommend that we would use that sort of additional notification to abutters um, so that uh, they would be made aware of uh, applications for licenses. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's it's a common practice. There's a standard convention in terms of what is it, ten days notice or seven days notice, something like that. Something but if you sure. help Jay um, with that, I have poor yeah. Jay. <laughs> so, so. Um, what I'm hearing is you'd like to be consistent with um, the recent change to our site plan review ordinance, which really followed along lines of what we do with, pardon me, subdivisions and other um, type of applications. So we can certainly um, pretty much copy and paste that language. It would be a pretty easy insert. Um, I can't remember if it's 10 or 14 days ahead of time mm -hmm. and is a butters, yeah. um, so. But it's, uh, it's, it's noticed through the mail, yep. through the U.S. Right. Postal yes. Service, and, and people tend to get those, and if they have an issue, they have a, an opportunity to show up for the hearing. And we had a similar, so, so I'd recommend that we use that language and revise this. Uh, is that the form of a motion? That is a, mo that is a motion. Second. Yes, thank you. So staff is hearing that we are going to make match with other notification standards. Work for you? So yeah, you're, well, leaving the draft, you're leaving the drafting so. to staff. It's, we're gonna, we, we understand the premise, um, but you'll leave the drafting yes. to staff because yes, understanding this is yes. going to council for first reading anyway. Right. It can always yes. be adjusted if we get it wrong, yes. but <laughs> pretty sure I'm clear on what you're looking for. We got a crack team. <laughs> but we had hashed that over pretty well, yeah. I think, actually okay. in, a, in a public setting like this. So. Yep. Okay. All those in favor? Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> My day is done. Happy. <laughs> we can leave now. Okay. Uh, well, so that was the first part. Anything else under licensing authority and procedure? I had nothing. Just look at my notes. Sorry. Okay. Um, license expiration and renewal. Anything? I had nothing. Uh, nope. Okay. Nope. Section 9, denial, suspension, or revocation of license. Nothing. Nothing there. Section 10, performance standards. Additional language to, in, uh, make sure to include in Part A5, mm -hmm. cultivation facilities in the list of, of grandfathered uses. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. I do Great. have a note Good there. catch. So in the form of a motion. Add cultivation facilities under 1085. 
Okay, um, I did have a notation when I read through this under 10A7, our odor, the odor, 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 drives me crazy. Uh, and so did I, and we did our work. <laughs> I know. And I've got, is this enough? But I'm, and where I'm coming from with that is one of our legislators said to me, um, just chatting, and it came up about odor in general, not just with marijuana, but in any type of odor. You know, what about federal rules? And I, I looked at him and I said, well, I don't think the feds, the feds leave that to the states. And I did a little bit of research. I, I have to say I'm not an attorney. I don't want to play one, um, but the states make the regs on that, and it's, again, um, so we've got detectable at the property boundary and, or at any adjoining use of the same property, whichever is closer. Closer to the public or closer to the Well, that, property? yeah. That's a good question. Don, can you repeat the question? I'm sorry. So, uh, I mean, I'm in favor of, of this. Um, I had circled it to make sure that, you know, uh, uh, we're confirming that it should apply for the property boundary. Uh, however, it did raise the issue for me about setbacks, uh, mm. which we address at a, a later point. So, if we are able to follow setback requirements and things that <coughs> generally follow rules in the uh, you know, in the uh, agricultural areas, I, you know, I think I'm in favor of that. But if we're, we're going right up to the property line and we have issues with it or, um, you know, I, I think I might have a different feeling on it. But I, I generally like this but felt that we need to be specific on setbacks and also think through the issues we've discussed about the pressures in RF zones between uh, continuing rural activity and new housing developments. Well, and there are state rules. As a real estate broker, you're aware of to agricultural use, and we have to be real careful about not putting crimps on agricultural use. And, ha you know, in other words, neighbors complaining, well, you live next to a farm, what do you yeah. expect type yeah. of thing? Is well, like, and the, the, the issue of growing hemp came yeah. kind of brought up, and that um, got me thinking about how that interplays as well with the good neighbor ordinance and what we do, especially in those zones. So mm -hmm. I think it's going to be something that's going to be an ongoing yeah. conversation. I don't think we're going to fix it. I'm fine Today. with, with this I'm fine with this as a draft and then I yeah. think possibly massaging it a little bit more or thinking a little bit more about that yeah. interplay would be important. This is the guy who hands out the carbon filter. <laughs> wow. okay, I'm question give is a couple how, addresses, okay? Perfect. My question is, how are we going to standardize it so it's not based on opinion? That's the only right. thing that matters to me. Because if yeah. I have to, based on what did you say? Opinion. So Subjective. if someone can so smell it, and I have to spend ten thousand dollars to mitigate it, and then they go, I still smell it. Am I going to spend another I fifty, sixty? Um, I, so I, I just say that we standardize. I don't know how, but a standard. That's agreed. That's the complication. There's the rub. I mean, Jay, that, it's a major rub. That is the issue. Yeah. Yeah, I guess the other question I would have is if, and you, you sort of touched on it, if we're, we, we've talked about cultivation, and in the RF, cultivation is, as we talked about at the direction of the ordinance committee members, what you want to treat it very much like agricultural, so folks will be growing outdoors in the RF district like they can grow any other um, uh, um, substance, you know, corn, peas, oh, what have thought. you. So, so I just wonder how, how do we sort of, take this you know, smell at the property boundary with now, because when it's in a building, you can presumably put in systems and you know do these carbon filters or what have you, but if you're growing outdoors and the wind's blowing west, well, I was going to say, and in your leading up to one of my yeah. things, when we get to the zoning, I was right. my suggestion is an RF that it's going to be enclosed. Okay, so I just I, I just sort of flag it because right now the way, yeah. so I just want to be sure yeah. you're yeah. mindful of that. So thank you. Yeah, I, I think that's. So. So uh, are we agree and we'll just leave it as is for the moment. For now. And there's, yeah, I'm fine there's going to be more, I think, coming out. Right. Um, Do you need a motion on that? or we're just, No, we're, yeah, we're just we're leaving it as is. Anything else on that page 10? No. Nope. I had nothing on right of access or inspection. Uh, <clears throat> insurance and indemnification. I yep, pretty assume. boilerplate. Good stuff. State law was yeah. pretty well the point. Section 11 violations and penalties. I didn't see anything there. I didn't hear anything from anyone. Mm -hmm. 
We did have under section 12 appeals. We did have strikeout under 12AB, excuse me, 12B. Um, and this is from our last meeting, if I recall. It says, any order, requirement, decision, or determination made or failure to act in the enforcement of this ordinance by the CEO or police chief is appealable, and they have the town council. Well, that, we said no. Yeah. So we've ch we've given it to the ZBA, Zoning Board of Appeals. Right. And we had so. good discussion, uh, if, if I may yeah, build ahead. on your, your recap there. Uh, we had a lot of discussion on that. We had input from uh, public safety uh, folks who were here, at, uh, and they agreed it, it made sense to go to the ZBA or to another administrative board rather than to the council uh, first. So mm -hmm. uh, I make a motion that we accept this language as and as proposed. Stricken. And proposed. Yeah, the zone I'll board second that. All those in favor? Okay, so I'll say ZBA. Uh, severability, other laws, effective date. I didn't have anything. Are you guys okay? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, now let's look at Chapter 405 <laughs> Zoning Ordinance. This is in our packet that's page one definitions. And these have been. Um, Edited first by uh, Phil and then our planning director, Jay. Um, that's edits RJC, that's Jay. So these have gone through both good. council and then internal um, staff. And so we, our staff feels good about the language and ready for you to decide Great. if you feel good about it too. Great. I didn't see anything under definitions. I had nothing Nor did I. throughout the document. Yep. And then under section 9, performance standards. Oh, Jay's got a little Actually, I, do, oh, I, sorry. I do have a question. One of the definitions <laughs> that's in there is medical marijuana dispensaries. Yeah. Oh, yeah, My yeah, understanding yeah, yeah. is we are taking medical so marijuana dispensaries Where out. Where is that? It's, uh, it's second the paragraph. second definition. Second pair. Oh, yeah. Let's strike. So just. So I make okay. a motion to strike the set at paragraph. Second. Can I actually? Yeah, go ahead. Um, if you wanted to consider maybe amending that motion to just remove any mention of medical marijuana dispensaries that out the entire document, yes. then we don't need to do it piecemeal. All right. right. As amended. Second. Second. <laughs> All those in favor? So we've taken medical dispensary right out. Mm -hmm. okay. Everyone happy? Yes. Yes, good. Do we get a fourth thank you? <laughs> All right, Section 9 Performance Standards. Now we're talking here about marijuana cultivation in the RF district. <laughs> I live in the RF district, so I have first-hand knowledge of the <laughs> RF district. I own eight acres, so. Um, what's that? <laughs> I have bees. We raise bees, okay? Bees are great for help. Let's stop. We want to the, 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 on X acres or more was the, the current standards. The question here to us, just for the public, is current standards require one acre or more for commercial agriculture use in two acres or more for commercial, I can't even talk, animal husbandry. The minimum lot size in RF is 80,000 square feet, which is uh, two builder acres, as we say in real estate. The committee indicated an interest being consistent with the standards for commercial ag uses, so staff requests further clarification. I know my personal preference is a minimum lot size of 80,000 square feet to keep it as large as possible. Yeah, I'm in favor of that. We uh, articulated that concept early on as we've been going through the, uh, these guidelines, so I think that's a safe place to start, and we move from there. So I uh, recommend that we uh, make a motion to require uh, uh, two acres uh, for the cultivation activity that's proposed. Is that a motion? That is. Yeah, he did put that in motion. I'll second that. All in favor? Any yeah. discussion? Favor? Yes, go. All right, 80,000 square feet it is then. Setbacks, here's the question from, from staff. Current standards do not address setback requirements for agricultural uses. Is this an issue the committee is interested in pursuing? Agricultural uses may be, per, at bay, be permitted right up to a property line. However, associated buildings need to meet the standard setback requirements. And for RF, that's 50 foot front yard and 15 foot side and rear yard, which I was surprised it was that small. I forgot it was that small. Um, and that includes setbacks for structures with which house farm animals. 
Is the community satisfied the growing operations may be connected up to the budding property line? This is where Jean Marie <laughs> would like to see something added to the ordinance that requires marijuana cultivation to be in an enclosed structure. I mean, this could be a greenhouse, it could be whatever, whatever. I'm in favor of that um, for a couple of reasons. One is uh, I think it'd be easier for us to control odors, especially as it relates to having the, uh, you know, whatever uh, uh, odor mitigation equipment is required, you know, inside. And along with that, I'd recommend that we follow the associated setbacks uh, for structures which are you know, 50 feet from the front and 15 right. side and rear. That would that would set up the, the Nick. He's raising his hand, so I have That's to great. reward I'm trying. you. Trying, he said, "Be like a student." <laughs> Um, there's a friend of mine that's on my road who grows over 200 cannabis plants outside. I live a less than a half a mile from them. I can't smell them. Um, and I ask my neighbors on a regular basis because I ride my bike around if they can smell it and they can't. Um, that's 200 plants. Like, that's a lot of smell mm -hmm. if you were going to ask. So I think the smell and relative to travel is a, maybe an eighth of a mile, like, yeah, that fast. Okay. I, I just think that's important to consider. Okay, thanks. But it's the people who have to deal with this. <laughs> Thoughts, Katie? Yeah, this is this one's um, a tougher one for me because it feels like we're pulling one industry aside and mm -hmm. putting something that uh, on one industry that isn't required by others necessarily. And yet, I moved into a new house recently and have discovered one of my neighbors in our zone. Um, and I have a lot of nieces and nephews, and they were over all weekend and just right next door and they auntie you, what's going on are you growing something I'm like not me uh -huh. um and that was just you know so yeah i don't know so this is a, I, I, have, I have a feeling this is going to be a for a, a, again my personal view versus what i think is right is in a little bit of uh competition um right and i don't want to discriminate again <clears throat> against an industry just because they're emerging and new, and that's what it feels like to say that they have to be closed and others do not. So I struggle. Uh, why why I don't struggle as much with this is because that the state rules require that all outdoor cultivation has to be secured with fencing, which you don't see that with corn or anything else. Um, at least six feet high, et cetera, et cetera, and with the lighting and whatnot. Um, so I don't personally don't see requiring an enclosed structure at this point in time to being something that's necessary negative to this particular industry, again, at this time. Um, and it's, I see that as a, as a compromise between those who are neighbors um, who, have, who have potential concerns that at least we've, <coughs> it's proactive, it's one of those trying to meet <coughs> partway Jill. It's Go ahead. <laughs> I have no dog in this fight. We grow indoors. I'm not sure you can ban outdoor cultivation. You might want to check with Phil. That's all. You can do what with I'm outdoor? not sure you can ban outdoor cultivation altogether. Oh, oh, oh. oh. And like I said, I have Well, for commercial purposes. Oh, right. I would say for commercial. I should, yeah, I'm I, sorry, I should say. Because yeah. you're right. Because it's personal. If I want to have my own personal yeah. plants, I can do that. No one would say anything. I don't know. So I mean, this ordinance is only for commercial activity, just as a reminder to everybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that would be just commercial. Yeah. Th that's a good point. So, uh, so I, yeah, I'm in favor of this having it in buildings and having it uh, comply with setback requirements. I don't, again, I don't know that much about this. You know, uh, I'm not. I don't have much of a green thumb uh, for anything, um, and and how, how this is going to to evolve as an industry, I don't know. My sense is there are, are a lot. Of, <coughs> Growers who use hydroponics and lighting and stuff like that, and they do that. You know, several people here have talked about the efficiency they get from their mm -hmm. their growing operations. You know, under a roof. So I, I, I don't think we're you know un, unfairly restricting um, growers by by these guidelines. We have tremendous pressure in Scarborough balancing the interests of homeowners, builders, uh, and and farmers and diggers, and, you know. So, I, uh, yeah. it'd be nice to try to pick a path where we, uh, you know, have fewer issues than we might have otherwise. So, I, 
that's kind of how I come out on this one. So, so I mean, it's, it's going to pass regardless. It sounds like, and I, so I, I'm going to stick with my gut and and say I don't. I'm not going to necessarily support that particular change. Okay. It'll be very interesting to see what happens at the council, council level, right. um, and I won't be there for that discussion. Right. But maybe I'll watch from home. Maybe I'll turn <laughs> into 1302 and watch from home. <laughs> Well, I'm not, I'm not yeah, worried about him today. Yeah, I, That's another issue. All right, uh, do we have a motion? Uh, I uh, recommend that we... Uh, uh, no, you recommend uh, you're making a motion. Uh, no, sorry. I'm uh, <laughs> making a motion that we uh, change the wording uh, to require that uh, <laughs> cultivation uh, take place uh, within commercial buildings. Cultivation. Commercial cultivation take place within buildings and that uh, those buildings comply with uh, typical setback requirements, uh, 50 front yard, 15 side and rear. I would second that. Discussion? Oh, Jay, you got something Can to say? Can I just ask a question? I want to be sure. Um, <coughs> when you say structures, are you considering hoop houses, yes. greenhouses, yes. the yes. sort of temporary yes. works that someone might yes. put up for a grow season and take down? Yes. I just want to be sure where yep. that's what... That's my intent, and I'm not That's looking at permits. Can, sure. can, can I kind of follow up a kind yeah. of similar question? So the language that you see in other districts says marijuana cultivation facility conducted within a full enclosed structure. Are you comfortable with that language being applied to RF, or did you want something different? I think that makes sense for the RF. Yes. It's consistent. Yes. Okay. Language. And sorry for the meandering, wandering motion, but that's... Oh boy, this is working. And we seconded I, it, and yep. now we'll be voting on it? Yep. Yes. Right. All in favor? All opposed? There we go. Two to one. All right. I just had to be contrary. No, yeah, that's on fine. On my last day. That's fine. I've got a Hey, would you stop? All right, uh, canopy requirements. We have a question here. Current standards do not address maximum canopy requirements for agricultural uses. Is this an issue the committee is interested in pursuing? I hadn't even given that any particular thought. <coughs> Sorry, I was distracted by the rest of Yeah, I was going to say Sorry. she's disrupting. You might want to gavel me down. Yeah. <laughs> the, All right, well, I'm sorry, where are we? The canopy one, I think, is. Well, we've got canopy as it is, so. Yeah. Yeah. What, so the question, what, what was it, uh, contemplated and what we would pursue here if we did want to pursue it, what would that be? Sure, the, it, sorry, yes, if I may. Um, yes. So the reason I, I pose that is simply, again, at the direction of the Ordinance Committee about really thinking about starting with our ag, uh, agricultural standards. We don't limit how much corn, peas, strawberries one can grow. So the question simply was, is that something the committee's interested in or not? I do think the fact that you've now talked about in enclosed structures may put some type of governor on there, but right. at the same time, I'll, uh, yeah. at, at your discretion. I Thanks, Jay. I, I don't know how we limit it. I don't we don't know enough about it, and I agree with what Jay had said about we put some, you know, Right, and we've, and we've got our fees for... Yeah. We're going to see a silver yeah. dome out in the middle of <laughs> West Scarborough now. Well, it would have to pass... Yeah. yeah. All right, so good. We're good with that. Mm -hmm. So no maximum canopy requirements per se. Marissa, <coughs> you got anything on this? No. Uh, any building or structure activity related to planting, propagation, growing, or harvesting marijuana must be operated and maintained in accordance with the latest edition of the Maine Department of Agriculture's Manual of Best Management Practices for Maine Agriculture. What the heck is that? <laughs> at the direction of the Ordinance Committee, looking at our performance standards for ag commercial agricultural uses, this is one of the standards. Um, and, and this does get to sort of the application of manures and oh, yeah. uh, how okay. you um, deal with compost and those sorts of things. Okay. So it's, it's really best, as it says, it's best <coughs> management okay. practices. Right. Do, so, do uh, growers use manure for cultivating marijuana? Uh, some, some people make their own soil, it's so rare that that kind of thing. Uh. Yeah. It's, it's about runoff. But it covers and, it runoff. I was going to yeah, say runoff. It covers a, a wide range of just best practices for <laughs> I agricultural I didn't know we activities. had that manual. Oh, that's, I learned something new. So. OK. 
Okay. Next, performance standards, marijuana, ma the marijuana manufacturing facility in RF. I didn't see anything there that was of a concern. Either of you? No. Section 14, rural oh, one, one, oh, one small Go thing ahead. I did see, though, that number seven, establishment of a marijuana manufacturing facility subject to site plan review. Do we need to stipulate by the planning board? Or we know that we know what that means. Uh, right? yeah, okay. yeah, you know what that means. Belt and suspenders. We can certainly do it if you'd like. No, that's okay. <laughs> I just was in a weak moment, so thank you. <laughs> uh, <coughs> and I have. Um, yeah, on, you have a note there under five. On the next section, section fourteen, rural farming district permitted uses. I've made note that to um, change that language, mayor, but want to cultivation to include the conducted within a full enclosed structure. Great. Okay, all right, good. Okay. Uh, I guess parkway permitted uses. So what we've got here is we're allowing under RF <coughs> cultivation and manufacturing and, and then with performance standards. Then we have Huggis Parkway District, the HP permitted uses, manufacturing and testing. Again, five point industrial overlay, which is where we have some currently existing is marijuana manufacturing, testing, cultivation. And we do have here medical marijuana dispenser. Right, but you already made a motion we, to, to, to do do remove that all that. Okay. Yeah, anywhere it's, so that will go get away. Struck automatically. Okay. Business office research district, uh, manufacturing, testing, dorm. Uh, two things. One is typo on research. Uh, the other is, uh, oh, I uh, not to nitpick here, but uh, <laughs> Spell check doesn't pick out a No, that's okay. Path. That's the only one I had for that one. I did have a question on a crossroads, but that's the only thing I had on that one. So okay. So now we're at crossroads. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a question on this. Crossroads planning district. Uh, I did have a question whether or not this fit with my understanding of the permitted uses in that uh, uh, an innovation district, which were going to be uh, biotechnology and, uh, you know, um, light industrial. Mm -hmm. Is that where it's envisioned to go? Yep, and, and so that's actually, you'll see they're labeled as uh, items 55 and 56. When you go through the list of permitted uses in the Crossroads uh, Plan Development District, when you get to about item 47, there's a break and then there's a nice caveat that says, okay, these uses below are only allowed in, and it describes the Innovation District and they have these other standards and so that starts at roughly number 48, which is manufacturing, light industrial. So these uses fall underneath that caveat. So yes, these are, would only be allowed in the innovation district portion of the crossroads. So my only question, and I've sat in on a few uh, reviews of, of uh, developers who are talking about various structures, you know, uh, businesses of various kinds <coughs> in, uh, in the innovation district. And, you know, one envision folks sitting outside and there were going to be co-working facilities and things like that. So I'm just wondering, is that, you know, from an odor standpoint or other factors that we've discussed, is that appropriate for the innovation district? I mean, I don't know. What's the question? I don't have an answer. I don't have a problem with this being the innovation district. Yeah, I don't either. But I, I'm guessing yeah. we're probably going to hear about Well, if we do, we do. I, I think yeah. it's actually, especially the testing facilities, Don, yeah. I, yeah. I really think those are a really... Um, over two years ago now, I actually met with our um, economic development director to talk about, you know, if we wanted to mm -hmm. signal to the industry that testing, where we're a biotech hub, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that really fits within that kind of Great. sphere of biotech, I, I think it is a natural alignment with what we're looking Great. to do there. Okay. That, but that not allowing grow there for, specifically, though, because that's not in line with what we want to see there. Terrific. I'm, I'm fine with that. Okay. Uh, industrial use. Obviously, we got manufacturing, testing, and then conducted. Uh, I can, God, gee, my mouth, my brain. Marijuana cultivation facility conducted with fully enclosed structure, and then light industrial <coughs> permitted uses marijuana manufacturing and testing and cultivation again with fully enclosed structure. Any comments? I think. Uh, the rest of these. Oh, I'm sorry, John. Yeah, I don't know. I would just wonder about cultivation in. An industrial district, but I, I'm not. I'm not super hung up on that. You know, 
I don't have a problem with it. So we we currently I mean, have a, a lot place. of we have a lot of cultivation taking yeah. place currently in industrial, it. so we would end up with a lot of non-conforming uses. Yeah. Um, we did talk a lot about um, at the beginning of this process concern about it being um, not necessarily the best use of our limited industrial space, but I think coming down on the side of it's currently where grow is happening and yeah. there's value in not creating a lot of non-conformity. Fine, I'm fine with that. I have a question, um, and this has to do with, Larissa, you gave us performance <coughs> standards for RF, in particular um, uh, pro uh, agricultural product stores and sale of products in stands, farm stands and whatever. Do we have to add to this that we don't want to see farmers selling marijuana at the farms? That's stands? illegal by state standards. No, okay, so I, that's all I needed yeah. to find out I, when I looked at this. I figured would, it was, so. Yes, the state <laughs> has, they have seen into that as a possibility and said no. Okay. <laughs> I think. <coughs> Any other comments from my committee members? Well, what I see happening with this, it will go up to council. I'm going to say it's going to go on. I'm going to move for it to go on the November 20th agenda after the new council is seated so that it's not Perfect. a bifurcated. Yeah, this I one. second that. So it's not a bifurcated process. Does the new council get seated November 20th or do they get seated the first meeting of December? 20th. The so second was the first meeting, meeting of after the, the yeah. second meeting the first, of November. It's the first meeting after the general election? Uh, well, the first meeting after the general election is the 6th. So they're seated on the 20th. Of November. Okay. That's what my calendar says too. No, it's yeah. I believe you. I'm not here to argue. <laughs> so that's what we're looking uh, at. Were you asking for comments? <laughs> okay. Is that what you were saying? Quickly. Yes. So, is there thought to when the public hearing meeting might be? Well, if this goes on the agenda, it's got to go to council first, then to the planning board, and then back to council. So um, does the public hearing take place at the second council meeting, or does it take place at the planning board, or both? Well, both. I think what we had talked about earlier was prior to this Oh, separate council, informational sessions. Be, I don't know if it's an information session or, or a, a workshop. Or, or a workshop. You could so workshop people, it, but I'm just. You know, people know before it's, you know, very far down the road. Idea. Maybe hear from Jay first, and yeah, then talk about the workshop, uh, town council. Jay, can you talk about the process? Council sure, I can talk about thing. The, the sort of regulatory process, and then uh, certainly have discussion about anything outside of that. But I, I think it's just worth noting. So, what the um, for for Chapter 405. So that's the zoning provisions we've talked about. That the the pattern is it's a first reading by town council. Right public hearing by the planning board, right. public hearing by town council, second reading. Right. So that could be any one of three to four meetings. Sometimes council right. chooses to have public hearing and second reading in, in one evening. Sometimes they separate them. So that'll be a discussion for down the road. The license isn't something that I, be, I don't believe the planning board would necessarily right. have to review. Right. So I guess I would defer. I believe that would just be a council, not just, right. but a council first reading, public hearing, second read, right. I believe, but I don't right. normally deal with license <laughs> no. approval you, processes. You are, right. so, you are right on um, that. Well, and when I say November 20th, what I'm thinking about, we're seating a new council, whatever, it could be that we could workshop this beginning of December even, mm -hmm. and then have it go, because there's no huge, huge rush, but I want to, I, my point is I don't want, I want to have the new council seated, mm -hmm. then we present this to them, so. Yeah, we've got other work like that that we're trying to get out of committee up to the council so that, you know, it's at least in motion um, around the time the Rosa, did you? council's going to see it. I was just confirming dates, um, yeah. so we're good. Okay. All right. So, uh, so just to be clear, so the public information or public hearing or because there's a lot that has transpired since the last public information session and I think mm -hmm. to... to well, <coughs> part of what, when you do, this is why we have the setup we do. Obviously, we don't present something, vote on it, pass it that night. Right. It's three steps. Right. You know, with public hearing, whenever, but we could 
uh, consider doing like a workshop prior to a town council meeting, then have it the the I want to say the bill, but we're not the legislature. The, having the um, ordinance changes and whatnot and rule changes, then at the next council meeting, which may make sense. So you've got a little more public input opportunity, so to speak, or at least hear about what's going on. Because Do workshops, you, people don't they really, don't speak. They don't really. So we did mention at the beginning of this process, and this is, I believe, what she's referring to. Um, we had the a couple of public information sessions back in February, mm -hmm. and we um, did mention that we would, once we had a, a final draft that was going to council, we would conduct an, another opportunity. Which is fine. So if, if this committee would direct staff to do so, I'm happy to identify two dates, one that would be midday for people that don't come out at night, and one that would be in the Good. evening for people that are not available during the day, and we could have just um, kind of the same sort of format. I could invite Phil, we could do a presentation Good. of the draft, um, members of the ordinance committee that were available could certainly be there to so speak to it. you won't know who the ordinance committee is until after, probably well, until the beginning of December. We could have those, though, prior to November 20th. Yeah, well, like, I, I could have those in the next session. Yeah, you okay. could have information sessions yeah, okay. in These would just be information sessions okay. what is going in front of council. You, okay. you could have, I think actually it would be a good idea, and I have the info sessions before there's a, a formal... Uh, agenda item for this to be yeah. in front of council. And I don't have it. Right. I'm just saying yeah. you've yeah, got yeah. this change. So, change. so, but if you work through it, though, you could have, to Larissa's point, those two yeah. info sessions yeah. um, between now and the next council yeah. meeting, which is the uh, which is the day after election day, November, November 6th. 6th. I'm thinking the last week of October, yeah. um, that week of October 28th yeah. would be a great week. That would give yeah. us two weeks to publicize them. Yeah. Um, and... I, so I think either that week or the week of the election itself, yeah. which yeah. would still be prior to the new council seating and, right. and yeah. taking this up. That makes so, sense. Um, okay. if I try to, I'll try to find, there's always a question about where do we find space. <laughs> so I can try to find space. Are you comfortable with just having two, one midday, one evening? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I'm going to start looking for space. I don't know if this has ever been um, brought up. The current um, businesses, growers or what have you, are they going to be, once this all passes, <coughs> are they going to be given a specific allotted time to get their applications in? You know, because they're not a new business. They're grandfathered for use and location, but they still have to do the application. Are they going to be given a specific amount of time? Yeah, I don't know. The, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I don't, that's a good question. I don't know. I mean, I think there, uh, as I understand, there uh, would be a commitment for them to obtain licensing. And they're going to need, I believe, and please, industry folks, correct me if I'm wrong, in order to secure their final state license, they're going to need to have town license approval. So I think that we can certainly put in language that all, you know, cultivation yeah. facilities must be licensed by maybe end of fiscal year 2020. So by June 30th of 2020, all licenses need to be... Yeah. Uh, that makes no sense. Not everybody's going to see not everybody's right. going to have four years of residency. So the real issue is getting your current medical operations license. You can't force people to apply for an adult use license. I didn't, no, but did I use the word adult use? Well, that's what you're talking about when you're talking the about... The state is not requiring the licensing level. for the medical caregivers, just the adult use? No, they're already licensed. Okay. So I think that, yes, we could put in language that required existing businesses to be, and we see this in other communities that have this language, that require licensing by a certain date. And we can work together with planning to decide when that's a reasonable an expectation. Okay. But I think certainly no later than if these do pass through council by the end of December or the first meeting in January, then it would, I think it would be very reasonable to expect everyone to have complied within six months of that date. But my only worry on that is that the, the state doesn't really finish their work. They've said March. March is awfully close to June with a state calendar. No, I so, know. You know. And we, and we do, are dealing, and, and and let's face it, <coughs> this is still all, all illegal under the feds, yep. so it's yep. like... Well, we're all medical, so it's not like we're all... If you, if you no, I know. We're not going to apply for rec license. No, I know. I know. How about I work with Phil? Um, yeah. Anything that's going to go before council will include language that yep. Phil recommends that to about where that, that requirement to meet by timeline. Yeah. So that makes that sense. Down, yeah. yeah, that makes sense. All right, that's it. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second.
All in favor? And we are done. Great. Thanks, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you.